Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. I wanted to take a few minutes today to show you how to interact with the Amazon Simple Storage Service, or S3, using the AWS PowerShell module. Now, in a separate video, I've already shown how to install and set up the PowerShell module, so in this video, we're going to assume that you've already got it installed, and you've already set up your IAM credentials. So let's go ahead and start exploring the AWS S3 service. The first thing we're going to do is call the get AWS commandlet name command and specify the service of S3. And this command is going to show us all of the different commands inside of the AWS PowerShell module that allow us to interact with S3. Some of the key commands that we're going to look at in this particular video are things like write S3 object. That allows us to upload files into an S3 bucket. We can also create a new S3 bucket using the new S3 bucket command. We can delete S3 buckets by using remove S3 bucket. And we can download or read S3 objects using the read S3 object command. So let's start out by just creating a test file locally. So I'm going to create a directory called C Amazon slash S3 files. Great, so now we've got this directory, but I need to put a file into it that we can upload. So I'm going to do set content dash path c slash amazon slash s3 files, and then put a simple object inside of it. So we'll create a JSON object, first name Trevor, last name Sullivan, and then we'll convert that to JSON using the convert to JSON command. And we need to specify a file name as well. So let's just call this person.json. Great. So now if we do get content path C Amazon S3 files slash person.json, you'll see we've got this simple JSON file. So I'm going to go ahead and just upload this to S3 after we've created the bucket. So the first thing we need to do is actually create the S3 bucket itself. So to do that, we use the new s3 bucket command. And the first parameter you're going to specify is the bucket name. So the bucket name is simply just an arbitrary name that we give to the bucket, but it does need to be globally unique. You can't take a bucket name that somebody else has already taken for their account. So I'm going to name this Trevor People. And then another parameter that you can optionally specify when you create a S3 bucket is what's called the canned ACL name. So there's a few different predefined access control lists that you can use to control access to your bucket. For example, you can make it publicly readable or public read-write access, but you want to use those with caution because that does give anyone the ability to read and write to your bucket without your authorization. So instead, what you'll typically want to do is just use the default, which is private, and that gives just you access to your own bucket. So let's go ahead and hit F8 to run that inside of Visual Studio Code here. And you can see we've successfully created the bucket. Now you can get a list of your buckets using the get S3 bucket command or just get a specific one. So we'll just use get S3 bucket, Trevor people, run that and verify that sure enough it does actually exist inside of our AWS account. So now that we have verified that our bucket exists, let's go ahead and upload our person.json file to it. So I'm going to call the write s3 object command. And the first parameter we're going to specify is the bucket name. So the bucket name again is Trevor People. And then we're going to specify the dash file parameter that allows us to specify the path to the local file on our file system that we want to upload. So I'm going to go ahead and specify the path to my JSON file there. And if we hit F8, you'll see that we successfully upload the file. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my AWS Management Console inside of my web browser, and we'll navigate over to the S3 feature. If we search for our bucket name using Trevor and look for Trevor people here, and we drill into that, sure enough, we can see that we have this person.json file there. So what else can we do with this? Well, let's switch back over to Visual Studio Code here, and let's take a look at how you can upload an entire directory of files. So I'm going to create a person2 up here and call this Kelly Sullivan. So we're going to create a second file. And I'll create a third file, call it person3.json, and call this Jill Sullivan. So let's go ahead and just verify that we have these files in our path here. So we'll do get child item path c Amazon slash s3 files. 
And sure enough, we have three different JSON files here. So we're going to upload this entire directory of files into Amazon S3. So we're going to use the same write S3 object command that we used before. But in this case, we're going to specify the bucket name. And instead of specifying the file parameter, we're going to use the folder parameter. So the folder parameter is obviously just the file path or folder path directly to the location on the file system where we want to upload files from. And then we can also specify what's called a key prefix. So S3 has a flat object structure. And even though the AWS Management Console will show you uh, what looks like a folder structure, it doesn't actually have any kind of folder structure to it. It's basically just a key name that, or an object name, that has slashes in it. Uh, but the AWS Management Console will basically just render that visually as a series of folders. So we can specify a key prefix here. And so I'm going to create a folder, a virtual folder path called people slash my people. And then every key that gets uploaded is going to show up under that kind of virtual folder structure. So let's go ahead and hit F8 and run that. And sure enough, we successfully upload this entire directory of files. So I'm going to switch back over to the AWS Management Console here in my web browser, hit the refresh button, and you can now see that in addition to the person.json file that we have, we now have people slash my people slash person, person2, and person3.json. So now if you want to remove items from or objects from S3, you can use the remove S3 object command. So we'll specify, of course, the bucket name, as is common with pretty much all S3 commands. And then we'll also specify the key that we want to remove. So in this case, I'm just going to re remove the item person.json that's in the root. So if I hit F8, you'll see I get a confirmation prompt here. So I'll click no to that or choose N for no. And I'll add the dash force parameter, which you'll typically see, which enables you to override any kind of prompt. So after we add dash force, you'll see that we've successfully deleted that file without any kind of prompting. So let's go ahead and navigate up to our root here again, the root of our bucket. We'll hit refresh. And sure enough, that file is now gone or that object in S3. But we still have this kind of virtual folder structure of three different S3 objects, person, person2, and person3.json. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to delete the entire bucket. So I'm going to call remove S3 bucket, specify the bucket name, and use force to override the prompt that we would normally get. And then I'm also going to add this switch parameter called delete bucket content. So if we just try to run this command as is, S3 is going to throw an error and basically tell us, hey, you have data inside of this S3 bucket. Are you actually sure that you want to delete it? And the way that you can override that is to just specify the delete bucket content parameter. And now if we hit F8 to run that, it will actually delete all of the objects in the bucket along with the bucket itself. So if we try to refresh here, you'll see we get this error that says the bucket doesn't exist. And if we navigate up to the root in the S3 Management Console, run a refresh, and then try to search for the Trevor People bucket, it no longer exists. So that's just a brief introduction into how to manage data using the AWS PowerShell module in S3. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up or a comment in what you'd like to see in future videos. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.